today we'll be looking at and answering the question, what are defective scripts? So as the name implies, a defective script is some type of writing system that has a defect to it, some kind of imperfection. And if we're honest, every sort of writing system is defective to a point unless it's something like IPA, right? The International Phonetic Alphabet uh, that tries to account for every single sound. I mean, maybe in the ancient world, Avestan or something like that would try and capture every sound. And, um, you know, there's a number of syllabic alphabet, well, maybe they're not alphabets, but syllabic writing systems that do capture every sound. Things like, you know, the scripts of the Indian subcontinent, Japanese, you know, or at least the hiragana and katakana systems, things like that. Even in the ancient world, Akkadian is by and large not defective, okay? Now, when it comes to other Semitic languages, especially the main ones that we see these days, namely Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew, we see that they are written defectively. So there's basically two ways in which Semitic scripts can be defective. The first is with consonants, and the second is with vowels. We won't dwell on consonants too much because I have a video or two already about them. You can go ahead and click in the upper right of this video to view more about the Begid Kephet letters. Basically, there are certain letters in Semitic scripts which have multiple sound values. And so we don't necessarily have a consonant for each sound we produce. Think of English, it's the same way. We have a number of sounds that are utilized by certain letters, even though we may not be readily aware uh, of that, especially with vowel quality. We do that a lot in English. Now, when it comes to Semitic alphabets, there, there is the tradition of the Beged Kephath letters, the Beged Kephet letters. These are six letters in the alphabet used to write Hebrew and Aramaic, including Syriac, that have two sound values to them right? So six letters with two values produces 12 sounds. There might even be a couple more, but that's a discussion for another time. In Arabic, Arabic is a little better when it comes to this because it uses different diacritical marks to distinguish specific sound values within some of its letters. And you may find different pronunciation locally with let's say, country dialects. If you go to Egypt, you know that some letters um, are not pronounced the way they're pronounced classically with the Fusa system. So you end up with a, a different accent reading those same letters. And maybe you'll hear those letters if you go to different parts of the Middle East. Now let's move on to consonants. What does that mean? Well, it means they're written with consonants and they're not written with vowels, at least originally. Now, in time, writing systems developed ways to compensate for this, and they did so by adding diacritical marks. These marks indicate the vowel quality to us, but we could look at the initial writing, and here we're gonna look at, let's say, the, the three languages, Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew, with the three letters, mim, lamed, kep, or mlk, and I'll just go ahead and say mlk for the rest of the conversation. The different languages, you know, may pronounce those letters differently, and that's okay. I've also included Syriac um, as one of the Aramaic systems, as it's um, one of the most dominant corpuses, or corpi, if I can, and I will, of Aramaic literature, and its fonts are cursive as opposed to the block font that we see in the imperial Aramaic period. So with that said, these diacritical markings produce vowels, and they indicate to us how to pronounce the word. And just looking at this MLK, this could, if we vocalize this differently, it could be a verb. It could be something else entirely. It could be the name of a deity in Hebrew, right? Um, so when we do this, we're just looking at the word for king. And if you saw it written without the diacritical marks, what's to say that it's not one of these other languages, especially when it comes to things like Aramaic and Hebrew that use the same alphabet the further back in time you go. And in fact, the Jewish tradition is to refer to 
Hebrew writing in the square character script as Kitav Ashuri or the Assyrian writing referring to the standardized Aramaic used and brought on by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. So as you can see, each of these MLKs now has vowels to let us know how they're exactly pronounced. That's very helpful. So the defect is attempted to be rectified with the markings. The ancient world, that's not always the case. And that's what is fun for us scholars is we get to sometimes um, disagree with one another about what these words might mean or could mean and how they lead to differing translations into subsequent languages. Let's try it with English real quick. So can we read defective writing? Well, I have the title on the on the screen here, and that's the first line. So you can see the way we would do it in English. We just use characters that aren't vowels, right? Now we can look at the second line and take a moment to yourself, see if you can read it on your own. And now try the third one. Kind of funky, right? All right, now let's look at the results and see if you got it. So the first one, of course, can we read defective writing? You'll notice that I have an apostrophe in some places, and um, I have a W in others. The W is kind of a half vowel almost. It's a, it's a consonant with a vowel quality to it. Or maybe it's the other way around. I think it's originally a consonant, even in the original Semitic alphabet. This is how we would have letters like wow and yod, for example. They're consonants, but if you iterate them a certain way, they become vowels. So let's look at our second line. Have you ever tried to read any of those puzzles that circulate around the internet? Sometimes you'll get something like this. You'll notice the way I write here too. Um, I'm including some other letters like, like Y here or W and I'm using them like they're vowels. Why am I doing that? Well, the reason for that is because in Hebrew or Aramaic, um, in languages like this, you have different writing conventions that develop over time. This is called a mater lectionis in Hebrew, for example. And sometimes we'll get a vowel or we'll get a, a consonant like aleph, the first letter, that is really a vowel holder. It's just a way to express that your mouth has been opened. And you can do that without even using a vowel. It's a glottal stop. But we don't, we don't do it too much in English. Maybe in certain dialectical English, you'll hear it. Um, Cockney accents in England, for example, you'll hear it. In our final sentence, it can be difficult to read English without vowels, or is it easy for you? So when we talk about the idea of defective writing systems, especially as they apply to things like Hebrew, Arabic, and Aramaic, keep in mind, it's just a unique way of writing. And really, it's more primitive, right? Because people who were writing in the early days, they knew their languages. So writing, you could think of it as a, a mnemonic device to help you remember something, right? And in fact, the more ancient you get, you get pictures to help you remember things too, right? Pictographic or logographic tradition does this. So that's our defective writing system. If you have questions about the defective writing as it applies to Hebrew, um, Aramaic, or any other Semitic language, go ahead and post them and we'll get to them in short order.